Are you finding yourself going around and around and around from one tutorial to another tutorial to another Udemy course to another tutorial, always constantly moving from one tutorial to another, but never really feeling like you're actually making progress in your who here feels like that? Press one in the chat. I actually want to see this. There are more ones than I was expecting. Notice that I said press one in chat if you feel like this, and a bunch of y'all dickheads were like, I'm gonna press zero. God, I'm so good at this game. Look at me go. Okay, well let's 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 do this one. Your growth as a junior developer. Well, I hate to break the news to you, but more than likely all of those tutorials you're doing are actually killing your growth as a junior developer. Partial, this video I want to talk agree. about why that is and how you can actually partial make agree. better use or the best use of those tutorials Hello, YouTube, as you're watching them up. and as you're working with them. Don't forget, if you have a question that you'd like to ask or a topic that you'd Get like em. me to cover with in an upcoming video, in your face. leave a comment below or head over to devmentordave.com and fill out the Ask Dave form. Hey Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. Now there are thousands and thousands of tutorials online for almost anything that you want to learn, not just how to write code. All right, I, I, I am going to speed it up a little bit because I'm so used to listening to things fast and I also speak pretty fast that we have to go faster. By the way, if you didn't know, having a bookshelf in the back increases your credibility by like a significant amount. But anything from learning how to talk well to learning how to fix a car. I even have a t-shirt that says certified YouTube mechanic because that's yep. where I go when I need to find uh, out how to fix my car, right? Plus so there's IQ, lots minimum. of different ways that you can get information, that you can be taught how to do things. And and we see a lot of times these tutorials either on YouTube or a paid subscription like Udemy or something like that. And a lot of junior developers can get caught up in this never ending cycle of, of watching and, and, and copying these tutorials. And it really actually ends up hurting them in the long run because okay, they spend yeah. a lot of time We've not really focusing on the things that are going to help them. So let me explain why, in my opinion, yep. tutorials Let's can go. be a good Come thing, on. but in excess, they really can stunt your growth as a junior developer. The first thing to remember is that a tutorial is teaching you information. It's not really teaching you a skill. It's teaching you okay, about fair something. Take. It's teaching you uh, about sort a of. language, or it's teaching you about a framework, or about a tool. It's teaching you about things. It's not necessarily teaching you how to actually put that into action, how to use this. Now, do they have examples? Absolutely. I'm not saying that they don't do anything for you in that department, but really, what they're trying to do is help you understand something. They're, they're using the examples so that you understand a concept, or that you understand um, what a language does or what a tool does. They're not really there to help you build your skill set using that tool. Okay, so I, I actually do agree with what he's trying to say here. So let, let me rephrase it in, in a way that I think what he is trying to say. And it's something that I've said many a times in the past, which is tutorials are really good if you already know what you're doing. Tutorials are not good if you don't know what you're doing. Now you're probably thinking, what is it? Hold on, whoa, 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 back it up. That doesn't make, that, that makes no sense what you're just saying right there. It absolutely does. Why don't you just chill out, okay? Chill out Twitch chat. And what I mean by that is that when you already know how to use something and you look at a tutorial, you know about all the different places in which something is falling apart, where errors can happen and all that. And so when you see somebody else use it in a different way, it really does help you a whole bunch if you already know. If you don't know though, it's just all magic and you completely shut up, okay, about Discord, okay, this is how it works. But really, like if you don't know what you're doing, a tutorial can give, it can be like a nice stepping ground for you to take what you've learned and try to expand it a whole bunch or build something of your own, but it is like not that great of a place just to simply learn in of itself and you really do have to go somewhere with it. You're gonna remember how to ride a bike years down the road, even when you can't actually still physically ride a bike, you're gonna still remember how to ride a bike if you learned that skill. But just because you memorized all the presidents in order doesn't mean that 30 years from now, you're gonna remember all those presidents. And unfortunately, that's what most tutorials really are. Uh, I, I, I don't really like that comparison. I mean, I, I see where he's going with it, which is there's like a head knowledge and a practiced knowledge right? A head knowledge is the fundamental, like, base take of practice knowledge. You have to have the layer, right? You have to, you have to know how to do how things work and then put it into practice. But I don't know about, I, you know, I, I didn't really like that. You know, I, I didn't really like that.
where they're teaching you information. I'll take as an invite to chime in. No, if I see if I see some level of chat that's actually non-zero IQ, I will I will engage with it. Okay, especially if it disagrees with me in a good way. They're not taking you through the ropes no and, okay. and forcing you to actually put charisma. this into real action. Eight. And the little ways that they do have you put into action are very, very simple. Most junior developers spend a lot of time following a video tutorial and typing out exactly everything that they're doing so that they follow along and that they're, they're doing it and they think that that's helping them build a skill set. Really, all you're doing is just copying what somebody else has already done. They've See, I also disagree with this take, too, because one of my biggest learning things was uh, XNA. If you guys remember the old XNA uh, platform with C Sharp, and I'd buy these books on how to build a game in XNA. And I, I would go through, and I'd follow through the book, and I'd learn how to do it, and then I'd take the book, and I'd take that as, like, my ability to be a launching platform, right? Being able to actually become good at something. Like, I totally am on his team that there are a lot of shitty tutorials but not all tutorials are shitty. Some of them really show you these larger ways, but it, you still got to go in and apply them. And so, like, I'm still thinking about that book, that very f first book that I ever did. Let's see. Let's see if uh, the acronym still works. Is rot. Look at this. I still remember this. Identity, scale, rotate, orbit, translate. Boom. How great is that? And that's that's from uh, X and A stuff. Right, and so like, did I did I get something out of it? Absolutely, I got something out of it. Uh, that was a very beautiful one, right? That was absolutely beautiful. Books are awesome. Books can be very, very good. Tutorials can be very, very good. But I mean, today's tutorials are pretty shitty, right? They're like, they're literally just like 400 characters and some example snippet code. That's not really a tutorial. That's not really going to get you anywhere. You're not actually building anything complex enough to learn from. But I mean, it's the practice part given you the answer key and you're just kind of filling in the circles they're all the just text. copies absolutely that doesn't mean you've actually learned how to use that language or how to use okay who here thinks just reading the docs and starting to build something is the way to go honestly i i hear this all the time i hear it constantly okay no sasha gray craigasms in the chat uh real talk who here thinks it is type one my hot take i don't think the docs are great for uh, the z for the zero to 60. I, I i don't think they're great for the zero to 60. i i think that 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 the docs are really great for the 60 beyond. And I think that that's where you go. You you first go up to get something just up and running. How, how do I start a server? How do I do this? Bam, 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 copy, paste, make it go, and then go and make something out of it. And then once you need to actually do something that's more intense than starting a server, like actually do something with the server, you read the effing docs. And then it helps a ton, right? Like I think the read me, the getting started, the quick the quick guide, the, the just, that, just that little bit, just, just rip right into it. I think that you don't, it's not quite the, the right place. There's a huge, let's say, hold on. Here's a different take. Tutorials are good, but don't get hooked on them. Uh, they'll only get you so far, and don't try to search for how to code like a Chad type of stuff. Well, we already know how to code like a Chad. You use Vim. We all know this, okay? Well, what do you mean? Use that tool or how to use that framework the way that you need to in order to actually do the job. But that doesn't mean that tutorials are all bad. In fact, I found them to be very helpful for myself, even as a senior developer. The key is yep. learning how to use tutorials in a way that's going to help you progress your career and not just keep you in a constant cycle of taking tutorials and sometimes taking tutorials over and over and over again because you just don't. Where, where do you recommend a startup? I think it's fine to start with tutorials. You just have to know that whatever you learn from a tutorial, you have to apply. Go make something yourself from whatever tutorial you did. You got to go and change it eight times. Make something for it. Feel like you really got it. Hey, if you find this information helpful, could you hit the like button for me? It helps me get this information to more people and hopefully help them on their journey to a successful career Smiling as well. So what's typing. the best way I know of to use tutorials to actually help you be successful way, as a junior the like developer? Button. The first key is listen to an explanation and then try to do what they're telling you to do before you see them do it. Good tutorials will actually explain what they want to teach you before they show you how to do it. So what you need to do is Fair. listen to the explanation, try to understand what they're talking about, and then hit the pause button before they show you how to actually use that in a real world example. All right, hold on, hold on. Can I, can I back this up? I actually want to kind of think about this for a second. Do you think that if you were to do this, do you think that the the, the person that's new, because this is actually, because I never grew up with this, so I don't really have like a strong opinion on it, which is, should they also prevent themselves from using chat GPT? No, yes, yes, no, yes, because a lot, a lot of back and forth here. All right, so here's here's my thought on ChatGPT and tutorials. 
is that it, 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 it also creates a tutorial-like hell in of itself because it gives you a bunch of answers right off the rip. And first off, they also just may be completely incorrect answers. You don't even have enough experience to know that they're, incom- they're in, uh, incomplete. But the process of learning requires you to do a little bit, struggle, fail, find an answer. Do a little bit, struggle, fail, find an answer. Do a little bit, struggle, fail, find an answer, right? Like that's really the process of learning. That's what makes a good tutorial. Well, that's actually what makes a bad and good tutorial is that at the end of the day, you make this really nice tutorial. You've just skipped over all the the parts where you failed and learned. Whereas with ChatGPT, you you don't get any of that. You get almost none of that, right? It just kind of gives you the answer and you don't actually have any of that struggle or learning phase, right? None, none of it really sets in. ChatGPT is terrible learning code uh, because you need uh, need to know enough to know when it's wrong, yeah? Yeah, I mean, see, that's the that's the hard part. Try to understand what they're talking about and then hit the pause button before they show you how to actually use that in a real world example. Yep. And then go over to your code editor and actually try to do it yourself. What this does is prove to you whether or not you really understood everything that you just listened to. Because if you can listen to something and then you can take the time and think through it and understand how am I going to put this into action in the real world, in real code, that is a huge boost to your success. It's a huge yeah. boost to your confidence to be able to then it's hit the play button and see that they did the same that thing that you just to did. Do something. Another thing you can do to make tutorials successful for you is to not do the example that they give. Instead, do something completely different. Is he telling Again, me just to we don't want to just tutorial? copy what the person teaching us is doing because we're not actually really putting it into use. It's not something that we've thought through. We're just following along somebody else in their process. We want to take the time to... That's why I've always said that I worry about something like Copilot as well. Copilot is really great because I can get started and rip through code and I can go to a new language and kind of like get through it pretty quickly because I generally know when something is correct. You know, like if I if I open up Golang and it's like, oh, strings dot stir convert, right? I like, I know right away, like, oh yeah, this is how you change the thing. Oh, st- uh, strings, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, strings dot a to i or whatever it is, or stir convert dot a to i, and you just like, you know, right away, like, okay, I'm looking at the correct item right here, but you don't really actually like learn the thing. Do you know what I mean? It's just like this thing that kind of like Copilot turns into autopilot really quickly, and it just kind of like goes through your brain, and you don't. It doesn't really, at least for me, it doesn't really feel like it sets in anything. Think through, how would we actually use this information? I disabled it because uh, it hinders my learning uh, process in uh, university. That's actually really smart. I would be so careful about using Copilot in university because the point of university is to struggle, right? The point of it is to just not know what you're doing and slowly get through it. It is the learning of programming and computer science. In the real world. So don't just try to create what they're going to create. Don't just try to implement it the way they implement it. Think about it. How would I implement this in a different situation, in a different scenario? And then write out code to do that. This is going to help you run into problems. It's going to help you try to figure out whether or not you understood what was going on. And then as you look at what they did, it may help you see the errors that you have in your scenario. What student has money to pay for Copilot? I think Copilot's free for students. Uh, would you t- uh, would you do a tech interview uh, with Copilot allowed? Typically, you'll see whenever you see tech interviews, they're usually with something like CodeSignal, which is like a uh, it's like a VS Code light thing in the browser. So there's no Copilot. You know what I mean? See, the goal of a tutorial is not just to give you information. The goal is for you to take that information and put it into real <laughs> practice doing real things. And that means you're going to have to avoid some of the easy examples that they give and try to find something difficult. Try to find a problem that you can solve with what you're learning from that tutorial. Okay, the last thing that you can do to make a tutorial successful for you, remember that tutorials are just the beginning. It's just a first step. A lot of junior developers like get I, into I, trouble I, I, I because they go lot. through a whole tutorial or a set of tutorials and they think they're done. You need to understand that it's just the beginning of you learning and implementing this and that there's a whole other world of information found in documentation. Once you've got the basics of a, of a language or of a program, of an application, of a framework, whatever it is that you're learning in, t- in your tutorial, once you've kind of got that basis and you understand the terminology and the different things that are kind of involved, then you'll find lots of other things that you can do with this that you never would have learned if you just stopped after the tutorial. So yep. tutorials can be really helpful if you use them the right way. But if you don't, they're probably going to kill your success rather than grow your success. Thanks for joining me. And if you'd like to get you more know, mentoring think... advice, click the subscribe button this and hit the bell icon to, to be notified each time I upload a new video. Hopefully this video has been a help to you on your journey as we'll a junior developer. Thank Always you for joining me and I look forward to seeing nice you on the next video. It. 
Uh, this always seems – it's, it's it, I swear this is like always the exact same thing I just see all the time, which is that – I mean there's a reason why going to a job and working on the same product every day for many hours – is it grows a lot of people. It takes them from a junior engineer into an engineer and into a senior engineer. And the reason being is that to get to the point of where all this struggle and growth happens, you got to get past the first 20%, right? You got to get into the part where it's the like the sludge, the 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 ma- the maintenance, the the being able to get like further and further into something that's just there's all these weird edge cases and problems that creep up, but it doesn't happen in the first month, right? It takes a long time for you to get there. And that's really where you see a lot of growth is when you maintain something beyond just its initial conception. You know, I always say that I don't care if you finish a project and all that. Absolutely. The point of doing little side projects and stuff is to learn what you like, to learn what's out there, to be familiar enough with it to talk about it. But if you want to become an expert, it takes more than just learning about something. You got to spend years trying to do stuff. And that's the I think that's the mentality that a lot of people don't have is the difference between understanding, being able to talk about something, and being a master of it. And to be a master, it just takes just forever, right? It takes intense effort becoming great at something. I do wonder if we see uh, if we seasoned engineers might not sometimes be a bit too critical about how novices learn things. We forget that we have decade uh, of uh, built of neural networks that specialize in processing this information that changes perspective substantially. Absolutely. That's why I don't I don't have a problem because I remember my most useful thing was following through the tutorial on how to build a first person shooter in C++, uh, how to build a uh, FPS in C++, right? So this is probably, let's see if they have this. Oh, there's probably way too many things. Uh, there was a book way back in the day that was just like so good. Now, obviously, it sucks now. It's like It was like DirectX 8. In fact, it was this one right here. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I got this one. This is one of the things I, I, I learned with, and it was great. I got so far into building something, and there's so much. There's like a little scripting language for like footstep sounds, and it was like all this stuff to be able to build, like, to, to do that. It was just super, super cool. Yeah, 2005. I got, like, 2007, right? I think DirectX 9 was just coming out when I was learning this. Uh, but either way, it was awesome. You know, it was such a great experience. Anyways, the name is the Primogen. Also, hey, subscribe subscribe to uh, Dev, uh, Dev Mentor Dave, okay? This is a great video.